Referee Bob Williams calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, 55 seconds of round number two. Your winner by technical knockout, Callum Mundo Smith. In that fight week, there was a lot of question marks around me. It was you know, how I was going to be at the new weight, how I was going to be under Buddy, how I was going to be coming back after a loss and stuff. And I feel like I answered them all pretty well. I showed them carrying me power up at 175. It wasn't just about the win, it was the way I won and I kind of announced myself to the division that you know, I am here to, to, to be a force and I believe I can become a world champion at it. And another camp with Buddy, my second one with him. I feel like I'm, I'm learning all the time with him. So. That part of it's enjoyable. Obviously, the physical side's tough on the body and stuff, but again, I'm in my tech year. You kind of get used to it, but I don't think he tried to change me too much. I think he kind of just adjusted and tightened up on certain areas that you know, I thought I really felt a need to improve on. We both seem to gel pretty well. I believe he knows what type of fighter I am. I kind of understand what type of fighter he's trying to, trying to slowly turn me into, and I feel I'm getting better and better as the weeks go by. And, I think we gelled pretty well there. Obviously, I think Buddy's style of fighting suited me. Obviously, just needed to tidy up on certain areas, which I believe we have. The stereotype Southpaw likes to keep it at range, likes to box at his own pace. Nice and tidy. You can see why he's got a good, good amateur background, good amateur pedigree, but you know, he's, he's a good fighter, but so am I. I believe I can box at range with him, but I believe I'm the better inside fighter as well. So. No, Southpaw's a fan. I was a, I was an international amateur. I boxed many, many of them. I used to spar them week in, week out, and probably my best win ever as a fighter was against the Southpaw in the amateurs. I beat a oh, two-time world champion and Rhea Hip London Olympic gold medalist from Kazakhstan. So, no, I, they don't really bother me too much. Obviously, things are a little bit different, a little bit more awkward. But I wouldn't say to me Crip tonight. No, if he was, I wouldn't have been calling for this fight. Other went one of the many other routes that, that were possible. <laughs> And I remember with the south part, right? You hit him with a good double right hand. Bam. Then you're going here. Then you're coming back in front of him. Go here, and come back out. Bam. All right? Keep him turning. I mean, don't, don't, don't come back in front of him when you're done punching. I don't really want to sit around and wait and hope to be given a voluntary, voluntary shout. I want to, I want to force myself into the position where the champion has to fight me and I win this fight and you no know, better bet will have to fight me at some point in, 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 in the near future. So he's got three belts as well, so it could be a, a smash and grab and get three for the price of one. But even down the super middle, I never asked for anything to be given to me. I worked hard, I got demanded three for WBC. I then entered the tournament where I had to get to the final to guarantee myself a world title shot. And, no, at 175, I'm the exact same. I'm not asking to be handed in and on a plate. If I want to have to go on a final eliminator, which I'm doing, I'll do that and I'll force myself to mandatory and I'll force the champion to fight me. He's got three belts. He's never been to, to points, never mind defeated. He's, he's very good, he's heavy handed, but no, he's not invincible. He can be it. He's been put over twice as a professional. So I just think once you see little, little weaknesses, it kind of gives you a little bit more belief. He's not invincible, he is beatable. And, I just feel I'm coming into my best years as probably he's probably leaving is and Simon could be right. I believe you no, know, I can beat anyone in the world and if I didn't believe I could beat Bertie Bev then I wouldn't be having a final eliminator to fight him. I'd have, say I'd have went one or the other route or I just sat and waited. I pushed for this fight to, to be to earn the chance to fight him and it's a fight I believe I win. Yeah. I never thought. Boxing will be back in Saudi Arabia, never mind. It's the exact same venue. and It's it's strange, it's nice. You know, part of me would like to have just left it the way it was, but part of me is looking forward to going back there. I've got great memories. Before the Ghost fight, there was a, I was going into the unknown and there was a lot of questions beforehand and I had no idea what to expect. Whereas I've been there and done it, I know exactly what to expect this time. So it kind of just takes that guessing side out of it. I know what, I know what we're going into, I know the place and it just gives you that little bit more relaxed and one less thing to worry about. I always enjoy fighting on the big shows and you know, Joshua Yusuf, it's a, it's a massive show and it's just interesting the two, two similar personalities yet two very different. I think this time around you're getting a more, a more serious switched on anti Joshua whereas I think Yusuf's the more He's the fun one to be around, he's always seen laughing and joking and he doesn't seem to take, take life too seriously but the minute the bell goes, they both switch on, they both turn into you know, you know, full-on fight mode. And 
it's an interesting one. Whoever whoever gets the game cut off first will we'll come out on top. But it's it's an it's one that I'm looking forward to, and hopefully I can sit and enjoy it having just won my fight.